Diablo 4 has transformed loot in a big way in Season 4, but it may be hard to keep track of, given that you want to invest in your best gear without screwing up. Now, I'm going to share with you in this video four main ways you're going to be able to juice up your gear, some of which are more complicated and expensive than others, but I'm going to walk you through the whole process. I want to do this because, surprisingly, over the last couple of live streams, I've had people come in my chat and tell me that they're new to Diablo 4. So I thought it'd be a good idea to create this video and ensuring that you're min and maxing your character the most effectively and efficiently. Now, it goes without saying there is trading in the game, but that will not be covered in this video. I hope you'll join me and stick around. We'll see you on the other side. All right, so in order to share with you the methods for juicing up your gear. I'm going to do some live demonstrations in the game. Now, the first couple of methods of juicing up your gear are actually old ways. It's not something that was improved on in Season 4, Loot Reborn, but they are important to cover. And again, especially for new players, this is going to be key to ensuring you are are tailoring your gear, specifically the affixes, to your playstyle and build. So, number one is imprinting. Now, like I said, this is an old one, um, but this is where you apply legendary aspects. So, through the Codex of Power. Now, we are also going to cover the fact that the Codex of Power has changed in Season 4, and that is we no longer carry them in our inventory. When we salvage gear just by loot dropping, any codex of power that's on that gear will get put into our codex of power. And as you can see here, here are all the codex of powers. Sorry, all the ad aspects. And there is a filter in the Codex of Power UI. So you can search your class only. You can, you can highlight which ones are dungeon specific. You can favor them, which ones you newly acquired. So there is a filter functionality. And the beauty of the changes in season four with not only the UI of the Codex of Power, but it's also the fact that you can repeatedly use these aspects endlessly. The other thing is they are upgraded as you salvage the aspects. So for example, on these defensive aspects, and they're also the filter shows, the UI, sorry, shows the different categories, defense, offense, resource. But you can see here, this aspect of mine has only been salvaged once whereas these ones are fully maxed out. So I'm getting the full potential out of the aspects. Now, going back to imprinting. So basically what imprinting is, you basically, whatever item you want to imprint an aspect to, you just highlight the Codex of Power. And again, you pick the aspect and um okay so let me let me pick one let's do this okay just out of curiosity there you go it's i'm just picking a random one we're not going to do this the only reason why i'm showing you this is i want to show you there is a material cost and a imprint aspect gold cost and as you can see it's not cheap and i say that for people that are beginning to play diablo 4 Obviously, your gold currency is not up there, but when you've played this game and you have multiple characters over and over, gold um, doesn't become as a huge issue as it does early game. Uh, but there is a material cost and an imprint cost, like I said. Okay, so that is imprinting. The other method of juicing up your gear, and again, this is not this is an old one not specific to season four and that is enchanting for example 
if you have a FX that you do not like and you would like to change. And again, I'm just picking random gear here on my Sorceress. We're not going to actually execute it, but you can, let's say you wanted to take out life. Okay. So you wanted to remove life as the FX because right now there's intelligence, life, and lucky hit. So we would select maximum life. That's the affix we want to replace. And again, there is material costs and there are enchantment in-game gold currency costs to enchanting an item. All right. Now, this is amazing, easy to do because it gets rid of the garbage affixes. So for example, let's say you had two beautiful two out of three affixes that you wanted on your gloves and you needed that other one to make it the perfect uh, affixes on your gloves, you would pick the one that you didn't want. And as an example, I'm using life. You would go enchant and it would give you three new possibilities that you could replace uh, maximum life with. So imprinting enchanting both then in the oculus that allow you to add aspects to your gear and allow you to remove one aspect and replace it with another through the enchanting these are both old methods not new to season four but a lot of people sometimes forget about the importance of doing these and if you have a lot of gold and materials, this really is a no brainer. For example, prior to going, you're leveling up, going into the capstones. This is a great way to kind of juice up your gear and make the capstones uh, that much more easier. So two simple ones, two old ways, but two great methods to juice up your gear. All right. So the next Two methods of juicing up your, your gear involve the blacksmith. And these are new to season four. And I'm sure most of you are aware, but we're going to cover tempering. Now, tempering is a way where you can add additional affixes to our gear. So remember, affixes have been reduced greatly. We now have three affixes on our gear and weapons unless it's a unique then it's four uh, but they've removed the amount of affixes on our gear simplified it and now have three and this allows tempering to come into the season four loot reborn and that means that you and here are here's an example as you can see the anvil next uh, below the top three affixes, intelligence, maximum life, and lucky hit, I added through tempering, hydra damage, and again, I, I added lucky hit as well uh, through tempering. And this is a fabulous way of, again, min-maxing your character. So before you can start tempering, you need to find tempering manuals, okay? And there is a lot of them, and they drop in all the content in season four, and they drop in different forms. So they'll drop magic recipes, rare, legendary, um, and dependent on the rarity that impacts the effectiveness of the tempering manual in other words just as a simple example guys and i'll do an image i'll, I'll show you an an actual image display of what the difference is between the different rarities of a specific tempering manual but i'd like to just make it simple for new players Basically, you want, when you were talking endgame, you want to temper with the legendary 
tempering manuals because they have the highest um, highest reward for you, the highest impact. For example, when we go rare, magic, rare, legendary, let's just, again, keep it very simple. The magic will have 1% vulnerable damage. The rare will have 5% vulnerable damage and the legendary will have 30 percent vulnerable damage again very generic example but it just when we're talking any game you want to uh use the legendary tempering manuals when you're tempering your gear so just remember they come in different forms of rarity and each one you know obviously escalates the effects that you're trying to put on your gear so you get these tempering manuals through just naturally playing the game now there are uh, better ways of sorry more effective ways of getting the legendary tempering manuals and that is with the higher tier content so for example the pit is a great place to get legendary aspects you can get legendary aspects in hell tides and nightmare dungeons but when you're doing the higher end content in that game uh sorry in that content okay um so just if you want to farm legendary uh, tempering manuals, just remember that they tend to drop more in the higher end content. Okay, so now that we've got the tempering manuals out of the way, basically you will be able to pick two categories and imprint them onto your, sorry, temper them onto a piece of gear. So you put the item, obviously, into the tempering. And as you can see here, I have three, the three affixes, a manner and kill, overpower damage, and lucky hit. And I can now put a offensive affix and a resource oriented uh, aspect on this ring. Now, again, it'll show you all the tempering manuals that you have found. If you haven't found a tempering manual, for example, this natural finesse, if I hadn't found this, manual it would not be here as an option so you need to find these manuals like i stated earlier now as you can see natural finesse i have found the legendary version of it which gives me the nice beefy beefy affixes and again uh, this is my level 100 source so probably have uh most of them are all legendary yeah they are they're all legendary but again so the other thing I want to highlight is when you are tempering, if you go to the bottom, you will see tempers five of five. So we have five slams of trying to get the the affixes that we want on this ring. Now, the beauty of it is they've given us one freebie. So you're actually going to get six tries to try to get the temper, the affix that you want on this gear. So what are our, what are our options on the offensive side? So we have this, so you, you just go through what you want. And okay, just for argument's sake, let's go for a hard one. Um, let's go for vulnerable damage, okay? So you can skip the animation. Okay, so it gives me cold damage now. I just slammed once, and as you can see, tempers still show five of five. Because like I said, you get a freebie. All right, so we're going to keep going to Frost Finesse, and let's hope we get vulnerable damage. Nope, we got Blizzard. Uh, Blizzard. Okay, let's try again for vulnerable. Ice Spike. Okay, so we still got three rolls. Let's try again. Of course, when I'm doing a video ice spikes again and looks like we're gonna butcher this one blizzard damage so we are down to our last one this is going to be a bricked item you skip it and we got it on our last try but um unfortunately we will not be able to temper because we used all of the tempers available six slams in order to get two 
affixes put on that you want. Now, it took me all six to get vulnerable damage on this ring. So now I'm screwed. That's it. So I can either accept this and accept the fact that I will only be able, I only have one tempering affix on this where really I could have two. So naturally myself personally, this to me is a bricked item, but this is how tempering works. This is how you can juice up your gear. Again, when you're doing this, there is a material cost, okay? There is a material cost. And just to show you, uh, okay, there is no gold cost, okay? It's just the materials. Okay, and again, salvaging your gear is important because that's how you get the salvaging mats, but there is no gold cost. So that is tempering in a nutshell. Okay, so the next way to juice up your gear, and this is a new feature introduced in season four, and that is master working. Master working is where you are going to Again, RNG related, but you're going to pick something and there's 12 ranks in master working and each rank gives a 5% buff to your affixes. Then on rank four, eight, and 12, it super juices it and it randomly picks one of your affixes in whatever your master working and pimps it up even more. Now you can see here, that my wand here has already been masterworked to rank three. And I purposely did that because I want to show you what happens on rank four. Because rank four, eight, and 12, like I said, this is where the big time juice up happens. All right. So rank one, there are no more failure rates, by the way. And for those of you that are new to Diablo 4, what are, you, what are you talking about? There used to be failure rates in masterworking. So you, it wasn't always 100% success rate. There, the, the chance to succeed dropped off as you got closer to rank 12. Um, but after the PTR, uh, Blizzard got rid of it. So you are going to only have to slam this 12 times to get rank 12. It's 100% success rate. Okay, so... Master working, as you can see, right on the top, right underneath the item power, it shows master working three of 12. So this is a rank three. All the affixes on this have been bumped up 5%. And guys, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going by memory here. I think it's 5%. And then this one should be 25%, but we'll find out. So rank three to rank four. Oh, here we go. One affix increased by 25%. Okay, my memory is not that bad. Now, this is not cheap. It used to be a lot more expensive. They just dropped the patch to reduce the cost. But as you can see, there are material costs here. This one here is pit related. You have to grind the pit. So if you want a masterwork, get into the pit as quickly as you can. Remember, it's a level 100 recommended uh, content. However, my sorceress got in there at level 78, but it's dependent on how comfortable you feel. But the point is you go into the pit to get one of the things that you need to be able to master work. So there are material costs and there's also gold uh, in order to every time you slam. Now, this used to be a lot more expensive. Um, okay, so let's see how lucky we get this is going to be rank four upgrade skip and holy moly so vulnerable damage got bumped by 25 percent and there you go it highlights which one it picked in blue you can see 64.4 percent Nowhere near the 77%, the range 58 to 77, but a good start. So this is amazing. So it picked vulnerable damage. And as you can see, 
I now need to go back to the pit and farm to get this material because it only drops on the pit. But the point is, this is how you masterwork your gear and this is how you can elevate and juice it up. Uh, and remember, grinding the pit, this is why I say this is an end game uh, feature because really in order to do the end game, I mean, in order to do the pit, I would say you got to be in the high 70s, 80s uh, for the brave guys, the grave people to go into the pit and start getting the mats for um, for master working. But again, a great way now, uh, you are going to be able to level this up to rank 12. And again, just juices up your gear, your armor, like it's just a great way, but it requires a ton, a ton of mats. But master working a must do in the end game if you really, really, really want to juice up your character. Okay, so you think you're done, but I have a bonus tip for you. And really, you should know this if you've been playing Diablo 4 for a long time. But there are enhanced affixes that drop by playing the game. And they're represented and highlighted with this triangle and the star. And they're very evident uh, when it drops on the ground. And they are enhanced affixes. Now, legendaries can have up to three. Uniques can have up to four enhanced affixes. And they're represented by that special dot, as you can see there. Here, the enhanced affix is intelligence. It's 135. Now, these enhanced affixes can have 150% of their normal value of the stat. So these are gold if you find ones with the enhanced affixes that your belt needs. So keep an eye out for them. They're very, uh, they're highlighted that you can't miss them. But this is a great way to increase and juice your character up. Um, so, again, you just have to find the one with the right affixes that are applicable to your build. But I thought I'd mention this. Like I said, I've only found, I think, two. Yeah, here's one. I found one, uh, a couple actually, with two enhanced affixes. In this case, life per second and movement speed. Um, but you can find up to four if it's a unique. So if you find that one, wow, good on you. Lucky you. But I haven't even found one with three enhanced affixes. But the bottom line is, again, this is a great way to juice up a character just through loot dropping. And this is season four, loot reborn. So those are the methods that you can juice up your character, your gear, your weapons, and making sure that you're min and maxing your character to the full effectiveness in season four. Okay, there you have it, everyone. That is my tips. This is mostly for beginners coming into Diablo 4. Although I would imagine a lot of veterans may forget that there are all these different options when it comes to juicing up your gear. Although I would beg to differ that if you've been playing this game, you know all this stuff. But I've had a lot of people coming in that saying they're new to Diablo 4. And I thought I'd do this video. And for those of you that are like me that forget a lot of things, this is a great way to just remind you what the options are when it comes to juicing up and juicing up your gear and weapons. And th this is applicable from the get-go, uh, right before you're going into the capstones, and also when you're min-maxing and you're getting to the end game and you really, really want to fine-tune your build, these are all the different options that are available to us when we're playing. Anyway, let me know what you think. Have you? Has anyone found an item with four enhanced affixes on it? I would love to, love to see that and hear about it. That must have been, and where did you get it? That That's, where did it drop? I would love to hear that. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found this video informative and you guys can come and watch me 
play Diablo 4 Season 4. I live stream every evening on Twitch. Sammy Caps is the channel name. Come out and uh, watch. We have a great community there. We're always talking Diablo 4, what's going on, amongst other things. Uh, I would love to have you stop by and say hello. And as always, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, it would help my channel immensely. And as always, we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.